Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the news of Ashuruk TV. Today's stories include Sudan addresses IOM on Sudanese stock abroad. Sudan has recorded 157 confirmed cases and 10 deaths. Intensive efforts to contain political crisis in Sudan. Sudan Permanent Mission in Geneva addressed the International Organization of Immigration, IMO, to review means for backing up government's efforts aimed at assisting the Sudanese citizens stuck abroad due to the COVID-19. The foreign ministry said in a statement issued on Thursday that the move comes in the context of the national efforts to encounter the COVID-19. The statement added that the mission is in continuous contact with the World Health Organization to monitor developments in the epidemic internationally. Sudan has recorded 157 new cases of coronavirus pandemic, increasing overall to 1,818 cases, deaths to 90 and recoveries 198, says the Ministry of Health. Senior official at the Sudan Federal Ministry of Health has disclosed that Khartoum, the capital city of Sudan, only registered 120 confirmed cases of COVID-19, noting all citizens to respect the restrictions of the ministry for curbing the pandemic as soon as possible. The military component of the Sovereign Council on Wednesday nominated former Major General Yassin Ibrahim for the post of Defence Minister. In a statement released on Wednesday, the collegial presidency said Yassin Ibrahim Yassin was nominated to replace the late Minister Jamal Omar who died in Juba last March. Under the transitional constitution, the Defence and Interior Ministers are nominated by the military component and appointed by the Prime Minister. Ibrahim, who is from North Kurdufan, worked in eastern and southern Sudan before the independence. He also worked as a teacher at the Joint Command and Staff College. The tribes of al Falat and Rizigat signed a covenant and a charter to stop hostilities in the recent incidents in the state of South Darfur, in which dozens of tribesmen were killed. The signing of the document witnessed by the second commander of the Rapid Support Force, the, cha the caretaker governor of South Darfur, Major General Hashim Khalid Mahmoud, the director general of South Darfur State Police, the general superintendent of Falata tribe, Yusuf Samani, and the representative of the superintendent of the Rizigat tribe, Dr. Muhammad Isa, and a number of leaders of the traditional administrations of the two tribes. The two tribes agreed on several items, including an agreement to immediately stop all hostile actions and security violations in all areas, secure the lives of all citizens, and intensify efforts to return the looted properties with purest of all predators and aggressors who trigger this sedition and to arrest them and bring them to trial. Khartoum witnessed on Wednesday evening and Thursday morning intensive contacts carried out by the different political parties to contain the political crisis broke out between the cabinet and the Sovereign Council. The Sovereign Council has earlier issued a press release pointing out that there is a consensus on relieving the Federal Minister of Health from his post, but later on it deleted the news from its social media websites. The Council of Ministers denied what was included in the SC statement, but the statement republished the news in its website again. Soon I learned that a number of the Council of Ministers, the Sovereign Council, leaderships of the forces of freedom and change, national and independent figures are currently exerting enormous efforts to contain the crisis, curb its complications and reach understanding that would diffuse the crisis. Sovereign Council member Sadiq Taur denied reports, saying he argued with the Minister of Health, Akram Atom, and recommended to remove him from the office. Tower, who chairs the Higher Committee for Health Emergencies over COVID-19, was speaking to Sudan Tribune after the release of controversial statement by the Sovereign Council, speaking about an agreement with the Prime Minister to remove a tome from his position during the meeting on May the 6th. However, Tower told Sudan Tribune that this report was inaccurate and that there were attempts to distort and spread frustration without elaborating. He further said that there are differences of views that appear during any joint action, but that cannot be called a conflict. Also, he underscored that he was not part of the meeting during which the Sovereign Council recommended to dismiss the Health Minister.
The Council of Ministers in its regular meeting, chaired by Prime Minister Dr. Abdul Hamadouk, reviewed a report on the security situations in the country, presented by the Minister of Interior, who pointed to a decrease in crime rates during the period of complete closure, noting to the recent incidents in states, attributing causes of those incidents to incitement rumors and the absence of the old methods to the treatment of the problems. The Minister of Culture and Information, the spokesman for the government, Faisal Muhammad Saleh, stated that the cabinet has deliberated on the report, pointing out to the importance of taking legal measures against criminals and the role of security committees in taking precautionary measures, indicating that the council is stressed on the need of holding accountable whoever negligent in carrying their duties and to control the media through the enforcement to combat rumors. The first deputy chairman of the Sovereign Council and commander of the Rapid Support Forces, Lieutenant General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalu, has warned against the consequences of stirring up strife and conflicts to achieve political goals. In a press statement following his visit today to the wounded and injured personnel of the Rapid Support in the incidents of Kadugli, Dagalu revealed the information of investigation boards to investigate the incidents that occurred in Kadugli, South Kurdufan, to clearly uncover the facts, expressing his regret for this incident, indicating that the rapid support force since the change in the country remained facing many challenges and is exposed to betrayal, planned targeting and secret plans. He added these hands are not only destroying the rapid support forces, but they also work to destroy the Sudan and we will uncover them in the near future. The head of the National Commission for Human Rights expressed her deep concern over the security situations among some components of the Sudanese society in a number of states. Kassala, South Kordofan, West Kordofan, South Darfur, Al Jazeera, which resulted in human rights violations, number of casualties and loss of properties. The Commission Chairwoman uh, Huria Ismail Abdel Muhsin added in a press statement that according to the Commission's responsibility and according to its law of 2009 which authorized it to monitor and protect human rights conditions in the country, calls on all parties to stop hostilities and abide by the directives of the relevant official and security authorities. She called on all the authorities' components to impose more state prestige by committing to implementing the provisions of the law and establishing security. And now we remind you with the headlines. Sudan addresses IOM on Sudanese stock abroad. Sudan has recorded 157 confirmed cases and 10 deaths. Intensive efforts to contain political crisis in the Sudan. That was everything for tonight. Thank you for watching. See you next time.